Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in my Asteroid Defense series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode I hope to get uh, some more launches underway towards Jewel and basically I want to get a Mystery Goo Containment Unit uh, mission, so lots of Goo units attached to that one, and then also a Science Junior mission. Uh, both of these, our goal will be to have them go to Jewel and return. Unlike the barometer and thermometer experiments, we need these to come back. And so we need a much more complicated launch. Well, I wouldn't say complicated, it's just going to be a modification on the AD-5. And then finally, the last thing I want to do is eventually send one of these mobile processing labs. That might not be in this episode, because uh, we'll do the unmanned missions first. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a basis of this uh, launch, since it was functional, it worked. And my assumption is we could probably load more onto this, in fact lots more. Uh, if I calculate things right, this is not a very efficient launcher. And when I have some spare time I'm going to look into uh, doing something else. It wouldn't be possible for me to do a more efficient launcher on camera or even while I'm intending to record. So I'll, I'll look into doing something a little bit more efficient without using any of the newer parts just yet. And, and then we'll be able to have it be more efficient. Right now, uh, the thrust here is about, I think it's, what is it, uh, 9,000 9, kilonewtons total. And so, in theory, around Kerbin, that should be able to lift 120 tons into space, into a low Kerbin orbit. And so, I mean, not just space, right? To low Kerbin orbit, the, the payload should be 120 tons. So this is a little bit underwhelming, uh, because as I calculated right now, this can only get 60 tons up, uh, from this stage up. Though, I might be underestimating that. Okay, so, but this is way less than 60 tons, so we have plenty of room to spare. This is, this is trivial. This is like 20 tons or something like that. So we'll have plenty of room to spare. Uh, let me do some of the construction work, work on ca off camera, and, and then come back to you with that. Okay, so here's the assembly that I got. This is the probe and eight goo containers, as you can see. So this will be our goo mission. And I've got the thrusters here because I sort of wanted to have this plate here as a heat shield. And uh, similarly this will be sort of a heat shield. I expect that this portion will be entering the jewel. So this will be aero braking around jewel. And then this will have to aero brake around earth. I mean, sorry, Kerbin. So that's the plan. Eight goo containers. The fuel is here and I hope that uh, the little rockets there can access it. I think the fuel flow should be fine. We've got batteries here, we've got plenty of solar panels, we've got parachutes. The only worry is that when we pop the parachutes it'll just pull this part off. I, I think it should be fine with all the struts and everything. But yeah, so I think we've got a little nifty probe here. Now, maybe I should add a few struts here just for looks. Uh, let's go to four. Again, it's very light for this rocket, but we might as well go with this. I don't know if I should use these rockets. Or something more substantial, like these. Considering mass is not much of an issue this time. I think you'll be all right as it is. So we'll try this one out and so we'll call this hmm what shall we call this? Well Jewel Goo Launch. Fine. And let's be all business-like about it. And I think we're all nice and configured. Now, you see I've got eight goo containers, so you know I'm not intending to just go to one place. I'm, I'm intending to have it 
go around all the moons of Jewel if possible, or as many as possible. I've done that once before, the grand tour of Jewel's moons, but I certainly didn't carry as much goo with me that time. I guess for looks we should add a antenna at least. Let's have one. We're intending to bring everything back, so it's not strictly necessary, but... There we go. Okay, and these, this is all colored green, and so we should just go with green for the rest of it, too. Because... Uh, this was all configured for asteroid stuff, but asteroid stuff is colored red for now. Okay, so the green ones go. Let's launch this. Okay, so here's our goo launch. SAS is on, throttle is up. Engines look to be the right number down there. All right, let's go. Okay, we've got some goo on its way to Jewel. Jewel looks green, so maybe it'll be at home there. We can already set it as a target, so we might as well do that. Okay. Okay, all systems nominal. Beginning a roll. Roll program. Okay, roll program is good. Gravity turn. gravity turning totally wrong. Hold on. Eek. Ah, there we go. Got disoriented for a sec there. Actually, our roll program is not good. It's still rolling quite a lot. I'm trying to correct that. The key is to... Oh, it's deviating. The key is to make sure the boosters separate properly and don't knock the the center stack. And that's why I wanted to roll it a bit, but this is not working out. Okay. Okay, boosters are away. And that's clean. Let's try and get this maneuvered right. Just waiting for the right time here. 
I have to remember that I don't technically have to do the entire burn at one go, unlike in Realism Overhaul, so I'm just gonna shut down the engines at 120 ish. I think uh, this is good enough. And then close to Apoapsis. It's much better to close to Apoapsis with Kerbin. Not not doable in Realism Overhaul or with Earth. The burn time for Earth just takes too long. So, really have to burn all the way up. Okay, so, well, let's let's see where we are. And if we can plot to Jewel or not. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can. Let's see if we can plot for a transfer right now. That's the fast transfer. I could go for that, but let's not. It's inefficient. And that might mean that we miss a moon or two. This is the efficient transfer. And this is the transfer I wanted. This is the Homan transfer, the reason why I timed it. So that uh, we launch when Jewel is at a 90 degree angle from Kerbin. That, that's only the number for Jewel, by the way, just in case you're listening and you don't know much about Homan transfers. Uh, each plant has a unique angle at which you should launch at in order to get this sort of transfer, which is the most efficient transfer available, uh, barring in-body physics and all sorts of, stuff, sorts of stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. Or uh, slingshots. You can do gravitational slingshots to make it easier, but... Uh, but yeah, if you just want to go direct, then Holman transfer is the way to go. And for Duna, it's a 45 degree angle. For Joule, it's a 90 degree angle. And for the other planets, uh, they each have to be calculated depending on how their orbit relates to Kerbin's. And I've done a video tutorial on that, but maybe I should do another one sometime soon. Okay, I should really make a tutorial series of some sort. The last, most of my tutorials I did with an old mic, so they don't sound particularly good. Uh, there was a headset mic that really was not good at all. Okay, this thing is a beast to turn. And I think I just have to point prograde. Now, I don't think I need to get in, though I might... That's pretty low. I think we can make it. I think uh, I can... Oh, that's cutting it close. 72... 72 kilometers. Going to be very close to dipping back into the atmosphere. Now I want to fine-tune the approach to Joule. Looks like we've only got a 1.3 degree gap, but we might as well try it. Well, no, we can't fix that. Uh, you can see we can't quite fix that because there's nearly a 90 degree angle between us and the descending node, and that's not an angle that allows you to correct the inclination. So we can't do that here. But we can add a maneuver once we get to the descending node. And bring that up. Trying to get the approach to Joule as close as possible on this maneuver. Not sure that will work out very well. As you can see, it really doesn't like me calculating anything in advance. <sighs> this thing. And this is uh, gravitational... This is the boost, by the way, the slingshot. You can see I'm coming into Joule at, at a very small orbit. This this would be my orbit. But gr Joule's gravity is slingshotting me into a much bigger orbit.
Ah, uh, I think we've got... Uh, oh, a Tilo encounter. Um... I don't want to encounter Tilo first, or Tylo. I need to... I do need to arrow break at Jewel. 17 is fine. I'll leave it at that for now. No, not... don't target Drez. Okay. So, we've got a good... oh, how, how much did that cost? 703. That's pretty expensive. But perhaps we can do most of this burn on this stage and then we should be fine. It's because of the inclination issue. The fact that I can't correct the inclination here means that I have to do a lot of burning over there. So yeah, somebody in the comments asked me to do a, a rendezvous tutorial to show how to launch to a target and rendezvous with it and so the next time I do an asteroid mission I'll try to explain that a little bit better and that asteroid mission should be right after I finish these jewel launches we'll turn back to asteroids as these jewel missions will continue on their way to jewel their long way to jewel right because the encounter is in like 300 or so days the maneuver will take some time, but not too long. Let's see if we can start now. Let me get it lined up properly. Oh, just about right. That's us making orbit. So you can see that this payload wasn't really, really, wasn't really suited to this launcher. This launcher couldn't carry much more than this. And that's why we're gonna pretty much do our entire jewel burn with this launch stage. This staging is wrong. Yeah. I want to make sure we're not actually crashing the Kerbin right now. Okay. And now it's just our spacecraft, and I think, hopefully panels are action group to one. Oh, those are. Okay, that's fair enough. Oh, those are thruster blocks, okay. Why do I have RCS thruster blocks without any RCS? Huh. Better question, why didn't I pack some RCS? Oh, it's because the 85 mission add RCS, that's fine. I don't think we'll need RCS. Okay, let's see if uh, this second maneuver is still okay. Not quite. We already actually have a dual encounter. We're, uh, but we're gonna be shifting it to over here because that'll give us a closer encounter. And it looks like it'll be cheaper than I thought. Let's see. Oh, that's crashing into the jewel. Okay, yeah, 600 kilometers is fine. And for much less than I thought, and... Well, if we wanted to go on to other planets, uh, that would be a bad thing, actually, because <laughs> it totally misses all of them. Anyway, uh, yep, so we're on our way to Jewel on this one. Let's get the Science Junior mission all nice and configured. The Goo Container mission is underway. 
And let me just make sure we've done it over here. Okay. All right, so Science Junior mission. All right, this will be our Science Junior launch. And so let's change this. Science Junior launch. And as you can see, it's a very troublesome assemblage. We've used some of these adapters, these tricouplers. I wish we had some of the quad couplers. I wish even more that we had some of the flatter ones. But no, we've got these, and so this is what we're going to work with. I couldn't find any place to fit any engine or fuel. I mean, we could put the engines back up there. But fuel was a problem because it's already pretty tall here. And couldn't really stick anything on these adapters. Uh, not even solar panels, not parachutes, nothing. So the best thing I could do was add some RCS tanks here and put RCS ports. So now we have RCS. Uh, probably we don't want so many RCS ports though, so I'm going to dump these. And so yeah, no fuel on this part anymore that's a bit of a problem and more of a problem is the fact that we already know that these science juniors don't stand much of an impact so we have to hope that this is enough parachute to keep them okay I think it should be but and they're light right uh, these six science juniors all together should be 1.2 tons hardly anything but but uh, this is a very awkward sort of thing to have returned to Kerbin. So I don't know. We'll have to see. But I think we're ready to go to send this on to Jewel. And that part of it should be fine. If I'm at all worried about it, I could always transmit the data back. But I don't think I'll do that. We'll try and bring it back properly. Okay. So on that note, let's bring it out to the launch pad and see if we can see if we can do this. Okay, here we are ready to go. Throttle up. SAS is on and launch. Okay, all systems nominal, and I'll try and do the rotation properly this time. Okay, let's try this again. Rotation. Gravity turn. Ah, much better. Okay. Booster separation is good. Booster separated cleanly. And the center stack is continuing on to orbit. And technically the center stack will continue on to Jewel. Like, well, it'll continue to uh, heliocentric orbit because it's going to definitely depart Kerbin's sphere of influence based on our previous mission. Okay, so here we are, 122 on the apoapsis, and I'm going to try for the same sort of burn that I did before. So I'm not going to get into orbit per se, but I'll just boost right out to Jewel. Okay, there's the fast one. We'll probably send the Kerbals themselves on a fast one instead of the this one. 
no point having them take the long trip. I'm not getting too much benefit from that. All right, we'll do this burn first, and then we'll expect to do an inclination adjustment halfway into the mission. We'll plot that after we finish this burn. All lights functioning properly. Good. Easy access to science juniors. Let's just quickly check to make sure I've done one in low carbon orbit. There's still some science available, but I don't think we'll go with that. Mm, this seems to be drifting off. No, oh, come on. Tough to control this huge stack without the engines on. It's only got the one reaction. Well, I, I, I don't know if it has a reaction wheel on I don't think so. I think it just has one reaction wheel. Which probably means that we're going to have to use that RCS. Oh, I wonder if there'll be... Well, the... Yeah, I wonder how easy it'll be to control and turn the other mission since it doesn't have RCS and might not have enough reaction wheel power. I don't know how much the probe core itself has. It might be enough. I don't know. Okay, we need to light. Okay, stage about to run out. Okay, separation and the lighting of the poodle. Let's get the solar panels out. Okay. Oh yeah, tough to control. The other mission is going to be uh, right trouble. Okay. Let's plot the mid-course plane change. And then this will be all set to go. I'm so glad that with 23.5 it'll keep these maneuvers that I set for it. Well, looks like we're going to have an easy time of it with this one. That's already crashing into Jewel. 600 kilometers, that's fine. So a much smaller burn this for this one. And that's probably because I launched it a little bit better. And also... Why else? Basically just launched it a little bit better. Oh, and I uh, tried to get a little bit closer, right? I did some tweaking to minimize the... Uh, bring it from uh, 2 billion meters to 1.5 billion meters. And so that might have helped as well. So, yep. Smaller burn for this one, which is good. And yeah, this is this has probably been a shorter episode for you than usual, but uh, it's about the same time for me, and that's because I left some of the building out, and also there wasn't much to say during the launches. So, but I hope you enjoyed it. We've got two more missions underway towards Jewel. We're gonna have a lot to do with Jewel pretty soon, and uh, not before we have some asteroid stuff. But we still have one more thing to do. And that's to launch Kerbals, and I have to decide whether I want to launch them on this rocket or on an improved and more efficient rocket. And we'll see about that. My intention is to launch them with a science lab. And, and not, not that they really need the science lab or anything, but they'll be more interesting anyway. And maybe we'll have them hanging around Jewel for a while and transmit data from there instead of just coming back directly. Of course, we have to make sure that they're able to come back. Otherwise, well, that wouldn't be very good, would it? So, very complicated mission on that one, and we'll talk about that next time. But here we've got uh, eight goo containers and six science juniors ready to send back much information to Kerbin. Much science will be gained from this. And even in a pinch, if for some reason I miscalculated how much 
uh, delta v, v we've got, uh, I can transmit the data back. So there's that. The only thing we can't do is let them crash into anything. So that'll be a big thing to avoid. So with this uh, not quite appropriately colored, maybe I should turn the lights off. Uh, not that that'll help anything. Well, yeah, I guess it, it looks better with the lights off. So uh, on this uh, great view of the sunrise above Kerbin, I'll say uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.